In this video, I'll show you how to fully set up your Epson Workforce Pro WF4820 and 4830. If you just unbox your printer and you want to know how to install the ink, the paper, how to connect it to your device and print using the Wi-Fi, well, just stay with me and I'll show you everything. So let's get started right away. So the first step is obviously to remove every single blue tape before being able to use the printer. So let's go ahead, you just need to rip everything. Next step is to power on your printer. Simply press once on the power button located on the front. Choose the language and by the way this screen is adjustable in angle so over here if you prefer standing up you can put it in this position. Okay so choose your language. This is a touch screen you just need to use it the same way you're using a smartphone. So I'll select English and then country and region. It's up to you to select where uh, you're actually located. Then select if you want the daylight saving time, winter or summer summer here, date format, the way you prefer it to be displayed. And now it's time to input the date, the current date. Once you input the date, press OK. Time format, this again, it's your preference. How do you prefer the time to be displayed? I'll prefer 12 hours and now input the time. OK. Now they ask us to install the ink cartridges that came with the printer. You can press how to over here and well, it will guide you and tell you exactly how it's done, but hey, you're watching this video, so I'll show you how to do it anyway. So the first step is to go on the side of the printer. This is the right side and you're gonna see a small gap over here where you can put your finger and lift the whole top lid. Okay, so lift it until it clicks in place. It will stay like that by itself. It's very easy to know which one goes where. Here we have black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. You absolutely need to put them in this order. These are the ink cartridges, and on the top you can see each of them has a label telling you which one is which. So let's start with the black one, this one over here. To open the package, you don't need any scissors. You see there's a small thing here, you just need to rip it out remove the cartridge and before putting it in you see there's a yellow label over here we just need to pull it out like that you need to put it so you're able to read the text over here i can read black bk with the qr code facing up like that also the contacts you see these are some contacts needs to be uh, touching these contacts of the printer now all you need to do is to bring it here align it you see with the black one glide it in and then take your finger and we'll need to push over here until it clicks in place like that this is how you know you have successfully installed your ink cartridge so let's do the next one which is the cyan i will align it and then simply push it and the last one the yellow now, in the future, if you want to remove one of these to replace it, you see there's a small lever here that is locking the ink cartridges in place. You just need to take your finger, push on the lever and then lift up. Then you'll be able to take it out. So very easy, push on the lever and pull it at the same time with your finger and then you can remove it. To close the lid, you just need to actually push on it until it's down. On the screen, it will tell you that you'll need to wait about five minutes. So come back when it's completed. Then when it's done, you're going to get this message. Simply press once on the screen. And now you have to select the paper size you're going to input. Press OK. And over here, it will tell you paper size, click on it, and if it's not letter size that you're planning to use, select the other size in this list. In my case, I'll input some letter size. So it's already selected, I'll just click on it. Make sure that uh, the paper type is the right one. Again, 
go through the list and check if one of these fits better your needs. Press OK. And now we need to load the paper. So it's very easy. The drawer where all the paper is stocked is over here. Simply put your fingers right over here where the edge is under it and pull towards you. So this is uh, my letter size paper, plain paper. And before being able to put it inside, we need to move these blue plastic guides. Let's start with this blue guide over here. To move these, you need to pinch them. You see every single one of them has one of these latches. So move it down until you arrive um, beside the paper size you want to input. So in my case, as I said, this is letter size. Over here it says LTR. So I'll just put it over here and stop it there. If you're planning to print on legal size paper, which is much longer, pinch this blue guide and pull this part of the drawer towards you to extend it. You see, it got bigger. And this time we have over here LGL for legal size. So you'll need to bring this little blue guide right beside LGL. But in my case, I don't need this extension. So again, I'll just pinch and put it back and put this where it says LTR. You may notice that there is a blue sticker here. We need to remove it. Like that. Then we need to extend this blue guide because right now the paper is not able to enter. This is mostly made for envelopes, you see. This would be an envelope size. So for regular paper, pinch over here and push it towards the side. Align your paper and simply glide it in like that. Then we just have to close this drawer. On the screen, if you do not plan to use the fax machine that is integrated in this printer, you need to press on close. If you want to use the fax, press on proceed and go through the menu that will appear on the screen. I think most people won't use fax, so I'll press close. Fax is not set up. Remind you later, I do not want to use the fax, so I'll press no. And here we have the main menu of this printer. We're going to interact with the printer and the different features that are available to us. It's very interactive and uh, easy to use. First thing is we need to connect this Epson printer to your Wi-Fi network. So let's see how this is done. This is the main menu of your printer. If you're not seeing this, you need to press on the house icon over here. So you get on the main menu screen. Then the third option from the top over here, you see there's a Wi-Fi logo. Press on it once. You're going to have multiple options. We need to select the first one. Wi-Fi recommended. Start setup. Select Wi-Fi wizard, the first option. It will scan for all the Wi-Fi networks around you. So at home or if you're at the office, it will select if it will show you every single network that are around the printer. And now we just have, just like on any touch screen, to go and select your actual Wi-Fi network from this list. Now it's time to enter the password. Go down, press on enter, and type your password. If you have numbers in your password, press this number button down below to switch. Once you're done typing the password, press OK and select Start Setup. Wait a few seconds or sometimes even a minute. Make sure that the printer is in the range of your Wi-Fi network. At the end, you're gonna get this blue check mark saying that everything is done properly and that and that's the printer is now connected to your Wi-Fi. Now that the printer is connected to the Wi-Fi, you'll go on your iPhone and download the Epson Smart Panel app. It looks like this. When it's downloaded, open the app. This is the main screen of the app. 
If you open the app for the first time, you probably won't see the screen. You'll have to click on agree on certain uh, screen before this one. But once you're over here, you need to click on the plus icon over here to add a new printer to the app. Then select the second option, connect to a product already on the Wi-Fi. Wait a bit, it will scan. And then you should see your Epson WF4820 or 4830 series printer over there. Click on it. Perfect, connection complete. Your printer is now connected to your smartphone. Click OK. And on top over here, you're gonna see your model. If we tap once on it, you're gonna see the ink levels of your printer. Now let me show you how to print. So extend this, because this is where all the paper will go. Oops, like that. Make sure you have some paper inserted. Once you're over here, you're gonna press print. You can also use the scanner with your phone and I'll also show you afterwards how to use it. So for now, let's print something. I'll press print, print photos or documents. If it's just text with some small graphics, you should select print documents. If it's a JPEG, a picture from your iPhone, click print photo. In my case, I'll print a document. And now I'll have to go through the phone memory to select which document I want to print. Once you have the document selected, you're gonna see a preview and we need to make sure that the settings are okay. How to do this? It's a bit tricky because you don't see anything appearing on the screen. You need to click over here where you see the size of the paper. Once you do that, you're gonna have all the different options you can change. So make sure your printer is selected, make sure the paper size is the right one, make sure the paper type is also the right one. In my case, I'm printing on plain paper, so I'll leave it like this. If you want borders, do you want it to be in color? All the other things, it's up to you to select depending on what you're trying to do. Over here, you have number of copies if you want to print multiples of this document. Once you're done, press on start and wait a few seconds. Here we go. This printer is able to print quite quickly, I uh, noticed. As you see, it only took about six, seven seconds to have my print out. Now, let me show you how to use the scanner so that whatever you scan on the printer gets in your phone. So on the top, this printer has two different scanners. There is one that is the most typical type of scanner we find in any kind of printer, a flatbed scanner like this. And you have another one on the top. The one on the top is if you're gonna scan multiple pages at the same time. You can, all, you can put them all there and the printer will take them one by one without you having to touch anything. Let me demonstrate starting with the flatbed. So over here, open the lid, take your document, Okay, and you're gonna notice there is an arrow over here. The only thing it means is that you need to put your document facing down with the arrow over there, with the corner of your document touching the arrow. So you need to align it with this corner like that. And make sure that over here, this is the top of your document and this is the bottom. So once it's aligned, close the lid on the app. I'll press scan. Under document source, make sure that scanner glass is selected. Select your document size. Here, this is not a letter size document. It's smaller, but I'll still leave it there. Then select if you want the scan to be in color or in black and white. The resolution, which is very important. If you're scanning some pictures, I suggest you choose 600 dpi. This will give you the maximum resolution, the maximum details. If you're simply scanning some text, 200 dpi is plenty enough. 300 dpi if your text document has some graphics. So here I'll choose low for this example. Then these, I won't touch them. I won't let the printer remove the background or anything. So nothing weird happens to my document. Then we have image format. You have three different choices depending what you're scanning. 
PDF, JPEG if it's a picture or TIFF. For this one, I'll choose JPEG. And once you're done, press the start button. Wait a few seconds and you're going to have a preview of what got scanned. You can zoom in to see if everything is sharp, everything is how you expect it to be. And then you have multiple options here on the side, which are very useful. For example, this small uh, flyer is smaller. So I'll press this cropping tool here and I'll be able to crop it exactly the way it's supposed to be. I can also rotate it afterwards. Once this is done, you can actually press plus here to add more scans to this document. If it's a PDF file, you can have hundreds of pages one after another. Just press this plus icon. Once you're done, press the next button. And then over here, if you click, you can give the scan a brand new name, something that is more accurate representing the document. So let me say test Toyota. Okay. Great. Press OK and then save. The file is saved to recent. Go back to the app home screen. Yes. And this is it. The document has been now saved on your smartphone. And by the way, if you didn't want to save the document on your phone, you just want to share it. Instead of pressing save, press this icon here and you'll have multiple options on how to share it using social media, using airdrop, message, you can save it in notes, email, everything is available to you. Now let me show you how to use this top scanner in case your document has multiple pages and you want to scan them quickly. So over here I have a document with three different pages. Make sure that every pages is in the right orientation like this and align them this way. Then on the top here, you have this small guideline and you're going to notice one line over here is written A4 and the, on the other line it's uh, LTRLGL. -L. This stands for letter size and legal document. So if you have one of these, this is a uh, letter size paper, US letter size, I'll bring this gray thing, this gray uh, guide towards the edge over here. Then all you have to do is to insert them in this slot over here facing up with the top part of the print on the left side, the way you see right over here. So I'll just put them here. Okay, perfect. And then I'll take back my app and in the app I'll press scan. This time on the top instead of scanner glass, I'll click and I'll select ADF. ADF stands for automatic document feeder. And again, just change these settings according to your project and press start and take a look what happens when you do this. The scanner will take one by one each page. Don't touch anything, just wait. Once this is done on your smartphone, you're going to have each page with a number above. If you have more pages, just put them at the same spot and press the plus icon and your document ha can have 500 pages if you wish. The next step are similar. You just need to press next, give a new name to this document and press save or share it once you're done. So this is how you connect this Epson WF4820 to your iPhone, how to print and also how to scan using both scanners. I hope my video was helpful. If so, please check the Amazon affiliate links in the description to get paper or ink for your printer. This is supporting my channel since I get a very, very small commission every time something buys from my links. Leave a like, subscribe, and I wish you a nice day.